They have gotten so comfortable and so complacent in where they are, they don't know how to move forward because they don't like change. But I stopped by to tell us this morning, if we're going to grow, if we're going to operate, if we're going to learn, if we're going to truly worship God, guess what? We've got to make some adjustments in our walk with Him. We've got to learn how to change the way we do things. A lot of times we're stuck in the same place because we're doing the same thing and those things are not benefiting our life. But God told me to tell you, if we're going to go where he has taken us, guess what? We've got to take a different direction. We've got to go in a different way. And, and that's true, true in all of our lives. If we want to excel in life, guess what? We've got to do what is necessary to do what God has called us to do so that we can get to the place God is trying to take us. Do I have any witnesses this morning that can testify? You can look back at your own life and you can see, look, I had to do some things differently if I wanted to go to a different place. Amen? I had to learn to do things a little bit differently if I wanted to excel in the things that God was trying to get me to. The focus that God is giving me is that we need to learn more about worship. Yes. We need to learn more of his word. Yes. Because his word is the basic foundation for anything we do in him. Uh -huh. I believe if we were more into his word, we wouldn't find some of the behaviors that we find among the children who call themselves the children of God. I believe if we were more in tune with his word, we would be less concerned about what somebody had on in church and more concerned about their soul salvation. I believe if we were more into the word, we wouldn't find some of the spirits that we find hanging out around the church. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Oh, come on. I hope y'all are going to pray with me this morning because I believe that the word of the Lord that's telling us to stop focusing on all of these other things and focus in my word. When you focus in my word, it will help you with all of that other stuff. And I'm delighted in what God has done in the history of this church. And, and I can see the hand of God strengthening us as believers. I see people who are less like and easily are less easily persuaded by negative behaviors. I see people who are stronger in their walk with him. And yes, there is still room for us to grow. Can I testify to somebody? I know a few things, but I don't know as much as I should know. And there's still room for me to learn. So I thank God that he is not finished with me yet. I thank God that he's still working on me. I thank God. I may not be all that I want to be, but I give him praise that I'm not all that I used to be. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Can anybody? Sometimes we are confused as to what to do next. Uh -huh. Sometimes we 
are confused as to where God wants us to go. Yes. Sometimes we are confused about who God wants us to be around. Come on, I hope y'all are going to pray with me. Some comes to me. I believe that a lot of us are still stuck where we're stuck is because of who we hang around. Amen. Some of y'all got power right there. Because the truth is, there are people that are around you that don't want to see you progress. So they hang around you so that they can speak things into your life that are not of God. And when you listen to those things, you find yourself stuck in the same position. Can I just be real with somebody? Young ladies, there are some men that you like, but God has not chosen them for your life. You need to cut them loose. Young men, there are some women in your life that God has not put you with.
with the other people. You may not like the way somebody dresses based on what you used to. But I learned a long time ago that if you pray with them and for them long enough, God will bless them to be able to buy things that you might seem to feel are more appropriate. But whatever it is, God never bar anybody from his kingdom based on what they had on. So we need to stop preaching about Somebody has on. 
They come to talk about what somebody did on last night instead of focusing on a clear word from the Lord. And guess what? A clear word from the Lord does not have to come from a preacher you like. Some of y'all miss it. Some of us don't want to hear the word if we don't like the person that's presenting the word. Some of us get so caught up in being entertained, we forget about being taught. It doesn't matter who's bringing you the word. The Bible declares, if God can make a jackass talk, then you better listen to what that jackass has to say. Because they could be speaking a word from the Lord. I stop by to tell us that we don't have what we need to have because we don't have clear vision. When this text was written, the Babylonians were in exile. They were away from their homes and from their homeland. And, and, and the Babylonians required that they sing a song. And, and the children of Israel basically said, how can we sing in a strange land? They, they, they were basically saying, we have not heard from the Lord. The Lord has not spoken. And if the Lord has not spoken, how can we hear? And if we can't hear, how can we sing in a strange land? I stop by to tell us, whenever you're going through your rough place, whenever you're going through your tough time, you need to have your mind and ears in tune to hear a word from the Lord. Because when you hear a word from the Lord has a way of making your rough place smooth. The Lord has a way of making your mountains low. The Lord has a way of blessing you in spite of what you're going through. I'm not talking to anybody this morning. There is a word from the Lord that's designed to bless you in your life. But you first have to hear the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. you got to hear a word from the Lord. That means you've got to be in meditation with God. And guess what? Can I, can I share a secret with you? You don't have to be in church to hear a word. If I get up in the morning, I want to hear a word from the Lord. So I focus my attention on Him. I might be moving around doing what I need to do, but I'm praying, Lord, I need a word from you today. Lord, I need for you to speak into my life. I need for you to speak into my situation that when I leave my house, Lord, everything is going to be fine. And when I get to my job, Lord, everything is going to be just as you're in somebody's life that's going to help turn that situation around. Yes. You're not just a receptacle. You are also a vessel. And a vessel is poured out of. You don't have to have the title of minister or reverend to speak a word into somebody's life. But you do have to know a word in order to speak a word. See, a lot of us are false prophets. We talking about stuff we don't know what we're talking about. Why? Because we ain't got no word in us. And you got to get some word in you to be able to bless somebody else's life. The Babylonians wanted a song. But the Israelites couldn't sing because they were in a rough place. They were in captivity. They lost their joy. They lost their hope because they had not received a word from the Lord. And I wish a few people would just testify this morning about how hearing a word from the Lord blessed your life. I would like to believe that you heard it from me, but if you didn't, whoever you heard it from, we ought to bless the name of the Lord that we heard something that blessed us in our lives, that helped us in our lives, that gave us joy in our rough time, that gave us peace in the midst of our storm. Because can I tell you something? Guess what? Just because you are not in a storm right now doesn't mean that you won't be going back into one. And whenever you go into one, you ought to have enough in you to be able to speak to whatever storm you're going through. And tell that storm, peace, be still. Tell that old devil, I've been here before. And the same God that blessed me the last
that's going to help us. Really think about this. On the day of creation, isn't that kind of what we go through in our own storm? Before God said anything, there was darkness. There was confusion. But the Bible says that God spoke and said, let there be. And it was. Yes. A word from the Lord turned darkness into light. Yes. A word from the Lord changed confusion into calmness. Y'all missed it. A word from the Lord changed the situation that, that, that surrounded the universe. And I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, all it takes is a word from the Lord to bless your life and change your circumstances. All it takes is a word from the Lord that will give you direction. And if you follow the word that the Lord gives you, you will find yourself in a better place. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Some of y'all looking at me kind of strange like you've never been through anything. Well, I've been through a few storms in my life.
bless me in the midst of that. And I ain't ashamed to tell you. I'm proud now. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm praying about that too. I'm proud. I don't take too, help too easily. I'll cry before I ask you for help. But when the Lord opens the door for you, Reverend Coleman told me a long time ago, he said, never turn down somebody's blessing. Because their blessing comes from blessing you. And when you turn down somebody's blessing, you're blocking their blessing. So when folk bless you, it's not because you're so good or because even they like you so much. It's because you've been faithful to the word of God. Now my Bible tells me that he'll even make folk that don't like you become your footstool. He'll make some folk bless you that don't like you. And they don't even know why they're blessing you. Why? Because you've been faithful to the word of God.
that trumpetry day on here. We've got to be willing to share His Word. And in order to do that, I've got to ensure that we know the Word in order to share the Word. So if you desire to move in revelation with me, the revelation that God has given me, then I just ask you to stand and take your place. Do what God has called you to do. That we can be the church he's called us to be. That's the bottom line for me. I'm not going to hear God say, Troy, y'all have a good trunk of treat that. I want to hear him say, Troy, well done. Our good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. He's not going to say, Troy, y'all have a good church anniversary. But church anniversary didn't save his balance. We've got to go back to basics. And that's our focus. So y'all going to hear me calling you. I'm going to be sending y'all letters. I'm going to be, if I find your name on Facebook, you're going to get a word from me. To be in a setting of teaching and learning. And Jeanette got some of y'all emails, so I'm going to be emailing you too. That we can go where God wants us to go, the way he wants us to go, and be who he wants us to be. I love tradition, but tradition didn't save me about the church. Amen. Amen. You don't have to have on a suit and a tie to get in the glory. Amen. It's cool. I, I believe in giving my best to God. And y'all know I like your best. But it didn't save anybody. That's not our focus. Our focus is on living a life that's pleasing in the sight of God. And when we live a life that's pleasing in the sight of God, guess what? Everybody likes to be a part of something good. When they see good in your life, they're going to want to know, hmm, how they get that good? How did they get there? And it opens up the door for you to tell them it was only by the grace and mercy of God. So if you're here today, you desire to accept the Lord as your Savior. Now is the acceptable time. Don't talk about wait till tomorrow. Don't talk about next week. Don't talk about next month. Because none of us know when our last day is going to be. So we need to do what we need to do right now while we have a chance. Do it now. And then begin to walk in the will and the way of God. Let us all stand.